Hello world, Noah here, and welcome to the String Lab for CS University. In this lab, we're going to implement a pretty interesting program, and it very well may be the coolest program that you've written so far. There's two sort of programs, you know, different programs here, but, um, you know, once we write one of them, the other one will be very, very similar. So, uh, so we'll start up here. Write a program that takes a four-letter string and converts it to lowercase unicode. Uh, so, for example, Noah uh, would be 110.111.97.104. And you can refer to, uh, to an ASCII table to see that. And I just want to note that, that the capital N is actually usually 78, but we said lowercase Unicode, so it should be 110. We want to convert it to a lowercase n, and then a lowercase n is, is 110. And then the program over here says write a program that takes four Unicode code points, basically four of these numbers here, and, uh, and converts them into a string. So for example, these four code points, 99, 111, 100, 101, translates to the string code, C-O-D-E. And so that's the challenge, and it may seem like you know, a really tricky challenge, but it really shouldn't be that bad, especially if you understand um, you know, the one slide from the lecture where we talked about the ASCII table. If you skipped over that or if that was confusing, I'll try to make it more clear here, but that's sort of the key to, to uh, being able to solve these. And so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, for this program, ask the user to enter their name, right? Um, because now we know how to do user input, and so we don't want to, um, you know, you know, hard code a variable and make people edit the source code. We want to actually ask the user to enter their name. And so this should be pretty easy. We'll use a variable, we'll call the variable name, and we'll say name is equal to, okay, we want to use the input function, right? So input in parentheses same as we did in the in the uh, previous lab, in the input lab. And then inside of the parentheses here, we wanna give them a prompt. We wanna say, please enter your name. And so we'll do that, please enter your name. Remember, I'm gonna put a colon and a space because the input is going to come on the same line um, as this message. So it'll say, please enter your name, and then I'll write, um, you know, Noah, for example, or whatever it's gonna be. I guess it's not really your name. I said I guess it says it takes a four-letter string. So, um, you know, maybe we'll we'll change this. Please enter uh, a message, and my message here happens to be Noah. Um, you know, but but it could be any message. And you could think about what we're doing as sort of like a secret code. Um, you know, if you gave someone you know this string of numbers, it probably wouldn't be immediately obvious what they mean. Um, but if you both understand how ASCII works, then you can you can communicate with each other. Now it's obviously not a secure communication method because anyone could figure out how it works. But you know, if you want to imagine that it's a secret code, then go for it. So we're asking the user for the message. We're going to say it's four characters long. We're not going to actually check to see if it's four characters long uh, because we don't know how to do that yet. Um, but if we did, it would involve the len function. Remember it, len l e n because that tells us the number of characters in a string. We'd want to check if the number of characters in the string is equal to four, but we don't know how to do that yet, and so we, we won't do that. And so once we have the, the message, we want to convert it into lowercase first. That was you know just an arbitrary restriction that I placed on it. Um, you don't have to do this, but it gives us more string practice. And so to do this, we want to use message.lower. Remember, lower converts it to lowercase. And after the word lower, we need to put parentheses there. But remember when we said that strings are immutable, which means unchangeable. And so when I say message.lower, it doesn't actually change this message variable. It gives me a copy of that string that is now lowercase. And so we need to actually say message is equal to message.lower. So we're saying take whatever message is right now, give me a lowercase copy of it, and now assign that copy to this variable here. So now message will be lowercase. We, we get the copy and we, and we save the copy to this variable. Okay, so now we've taken care of the lowercase part. Next, we need to take care of the Unicode part. And so in order to do this, right, we can use the ORD function that we said before, because remember, ORD takes uh, you know a character, whoops, and um, and it gives you the corresponding string, or sorry, it gives you the not string, it gives you the corresponding number. So so uh, so lowercase a corresponds with ninety seven, 
and so on and so forth. So we need to remember that. And we also need to remember string indexing. So let's do a quick refresher on that. So um, if I have the string N O A H like this, remember the indices start at zero and they go up from there. So N is at index zero and the last one, which is H is it is at index three, right? And then the last thing you should remember is how to actually index a string, which is what we're about to do. And so what we'll do is we'll split this up into four separate um, uh, strings, uh, you know, four separate single characters, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, whoops, we'll go ahead and convert those characters as appropriate. So let's do that right here. So we'll, I'm gonna name these characters A, B, C, and D. Um, you can name them something else, but we just want to split up this name into its individual pieces, its individual characters, and then convert them one at a time. And to do this, I'll actually use a multiple assignment, which we briefly touched on in, I guess, the, the variables lecture. But I'll write something like A, B, C, D is equal to, now we want to access all of the, the individual characters. And to do that, remember, we use the, the indexing operator, which is the square bracket. So message zero, message, whoops, one, message two, and message three, just like that. And remember with this multiple assignment, this first value will be assigned to A, this value here will be assigned to B, this one to C, and this one to D. And so all that this will have the effect of doing is it's going to basically assign A to be the first character, N, right? We're saying this message at index zero. Well, for this example, index zero is N. Whatever the message is, it'll be different. Um, but the first character will go to A, the second character will go to B, uh, or I guess the zeroth character, the first character, whatever. The second character will go to C, and the third last character will go to D. And so now A, B, C, and D are the individual characters. And so next we can use the ORD function to convert all of them. And so, you know, you could use four separate variable names if you want. You could overwrite the variables that we had before. I'm gonna overwrite the variables and I don't wanna make this confusing, um, but we don't really care about the individual characters themselves. We just wanna convert them all into, into their integer versions. And so I'm just gonna overwrite the variables A, B, C, and D. So A, B, C, D is equal to, and now we wanna call the ORD function on, on each of them. So the ORD of A, the ORD of B, whoops, the ORD of C, and the ORD of D, just like that. And so what we're doing is we're saying A is equal to the ORD, and I don't think I mentioned this in the lecture, but ORD stands for ordinal, and ordinal means like a number in an order, right? So, so basically, um, you know, every character has a number and it starts at zero and it counts up by one each time. So they're ordinal numbers. And so this gives the ordinal number for this character. So if I didn't mention that, I don't think I did. So we're saying, what's the ordinal number for the variable A, whatever character it happens to have, and we're assigning it to A. So basically what we're doing is we're converting each of these individual characters into their number values, their, their ordinal values, right? Um, and so that should be pretty straightforward right there. And then the last thing that we need to do is we just need to print out our answer. And so what we can do is we can print out A, B, C, and D. And remember when we use the commas, it will you know print out these as four separate variables and it'll put a space between each one of them. So let's just quickly review exactly what this program does and then we can test it out. So first message, we need to get the user's input. So we're gonna say, please enter a message. I guess we should say, please enter a four character message just to be clear about that. Then we convert the message into lowercase. We get a lowercase copy and we save it to this variable message. Then we split up the message into its four individual characters. Then we convert each character into its ordinal value, which is its you know, Unicode number, whatever you wanna think about it as. And then finally we print out the answer. So Noah should give us this answer that we expect. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll save that. Okay, please enter a four character message. We do that and it gives us 110, 111, 97, 104, which is exactly what we expected it to do. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, we wrote this, this nice uh, program so that we don't have to worry about checking a table every time 
you can just type in a message and, and it'll convert it for you. Now the four character limit was arbitrary, that was just something that I decided on, um, because you could imagine if you wanted to support uh, a longer message, you'd have to have more variables, A, B, C, D. If you want to be five characters, you need to have an E here, which would be message at index four. And then you need to convert it to its ordinal and add it to this print statement. And so very quickly it becomes, uh, you know, unmanageable. There's just too many variables going on and it's just too confusing. Um, and so basically, um, eventually uh, we'll learn about lists. And once we learn about lists, we'll be able to deal with this a lot nicer and we'll be able to support uh, messages of any length, um, which will be very nice. And so there's a lot of stuff here that, that, that we'll, you know, we'll learn later. And so if you revisit this program, you know, by the end of, uh, of these, this introductory series, you should be able to make quite a few improvements. Um, you know, you could add a check for the length, although I guess, you know, we'd be able to remove that limit. Um, but eventually, you know, when we learn about lists and for loops, we'll be able to support messages of any length. But for now, we'll stick with four characters because that's doable. And so to go the opposite way, it's going to be very similar. It's just different inputs and outputs. And instead of the ORD function for the ordinal number, we want to use the CHR function, which stands for character, as you can uh, probably imagine. And so, um, you know, the code will look a little bit different, but it will actually, you know, end up working quite uh, similarly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to ask the user to enter four numbers. And we're going to have them enter as four separate numbers because we don't yet know how to deal with them entering four numbers on one line. Again, that's another thing that you'll learn eventually and be able to come back and, and change it. Um, but what we'll do here is I'm actually going to put a print statement before my four inputs because when we have four inputs, I feel like having, you know, you know, four prompts that are really wordy, you know, kind of isn't great. So let's just say, um, you know, please enter, oops, please enter four Unicode code points, one per line. I think that's pretty clear. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get the inputs. Now I'm going to use the variables A, B, C, and D again. You can imagine these are two different programs, although it doesn't really matter because once this one finishes, you know, then the next one will go. So we want to get four inputs. I'm not going to use the prompt here. Whoops. I'm not going to use the prompt here because I'm just going to print out this one message and I'm going to, you know, let it get the, the four inputs at once. We should note that these inputs need to be integers, right? Because uh, these code points are, are integer numbers and we need to treat them like integers in order to use the CHR function. And so each of these inputs needs to be wrapped inside of a call to int, just like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, change all of these, just like that. And so, um, you know, basically we're getting, for each one, we're getting a line of input as a string, and then we're converting it to an integer because we need to treat them as integers. And now we're going to do something similar to this where we, um, uh, what's it called? We're gonna do something similar to this where we uh, you know, convert everything, but instead of ORD, we're gonna use CHR. So we're gonna say ABCD is equal to CHR of A, CHR of B, CHR of C, CHR of D. And so remember, a is going to be CHR of A, B, and it's going to match them up as we expect. So it's going to take these four integers and convert them into their corresponding uh, Unicode or, or ASCII uh, values. And then the last thing we need to do is display the, uh, the result. Now, if we just, um, you know, if we just wrote A comma B comma C comma D, it would put a space in between them. So it would write C space O space D space E, which is probably not what we want. So if we just do a plus b plus c plus d, they're all strings, so we can add them all up. We can, you know, adding them will concatenate them. And this will ensure that we don't have any spaces, um, you know, in our answer. And so, and so that's all that we have to do for this program. You know, we ask for four inputs, we get our four inputs, we convert them all into their uh, corresponding characters using the CHR functions built in, and then we just print out our answer. And so let's go ahead and test this. Let's, you know, we'll do the first part first. It still works. Please enter the code points one per line. You know, let's go 999, or sorry, 99, 111, 100, and 101. And you see it gives us the output of code, 
which is exactly what we expected. And you know, I could run this again. You can just double check, you know, I go one way and can I go back the other way? Yeah. And so of course it's going to give me with a lowercase n because we said lowercase unicode at the, you know, the upper part. And if you just get rid of this lowercase part, then it'll, you know, be the same in both directions. But basically here you have maybe a little secret code um, and you have this thing that can encode and decode uh, messages. And of course they're only four characters long right now because we don't know enough to make them longer. Um, and you know, there's, there's lots of other things that we could do with this program. So if you revisit it, you know, after you know more, uh, you could definitely do quite a bit to improve it. But I think this illustrates some of the good ideas about strings. We have, you know, nice string function lower here. We are demonstrating the immutability of strings. We are uh, indexing strings and we're dealing with ORD and CHR. We're remembering how Unicode and ASCII work, which are just good things to know. And we got some string concatenation right here. Um, you know, I think this is a pretty good, uh, you know, lab for the strings. And so if you understand what's going on here, I would say you probably have a pretty good understanding um, of how strings work. So that's all for this lab. I hope that made sense. And I will see you guys in the next one.